What's going on, baby? We gonna get this. This is championship footage. Championship four. Man, bro, what you gonna do to these chumps? Man, I don't know. You won't have to wait to see that. WBO welterweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud. Give me a game face. All right. To understand the present, one must look to the past. What's going on? It's Showtime Sean Porter, a.k.a. Mr. Superman. For in the past lies the truth. Time for it, man. Superman, tell somebody, man. For two of their generation's greatest, over a lifetime's toil, paths inevitably intertwine, frequently passing within each other's reach without ever trading blows. Sean then fought all the welterweights there is to fight. He's the guy to beat. As amateur success gave way to professional glory, their destinies came closer than ever. Right now, we are the top guys at, at the division where there's nowhere for us to turn. When one faced a formidable foe and the other did not, Harris, will you guys have a fight? Comparisons amplify. Some fighters is ducking. I ain't even gonna lie. Some, they, they ducking. They wanna keep that status of being viewed as the best in the division, and they know going up against a guy like me can ruin all that. However, it is always the present that matters most. For here, too, lies the truth. This is a win-win situation for Sean and it's a win-lose situation for me because everything is at risk right now. Terrence Crawford knows that if he beats me, there's nobody else in the world that can beat him. I think he knows that I'm the only one in the world that can beat him. It is here, and only here, where one can avenge the past and confront an opponent that has been a long time coming. The way I'm going to beat Terrence Crawford, that's why you become great. Whatever Sean Porter brings, we're going to be prepared. Show him why you the powerful pound best. Go get him, bud. This is Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Crawford versus Porter. Omaha, Nebraska remains a large part of the life of one of the world's greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighters. For even with all his extraordinary success, Terrence Crawford and his family still call the city home, in spite of its tougher side. Well, this part of town was a little rough. It still is but we managed. We just knew where to hang out and where not to hang out. And my mom stayed on us, so she really didn't let us go too many places. I was hard on them. I'm the mama, and y'all gonna follow by my rules or y'all can get out. I think she was just trying to show him tough love so when he grow up, he We'll see how it is and why she did the things she did. Because if we didn't have that, we probably wouldn't be here. But Bud's a good kid. He got a good heart. He worked hard. He'd get up early in the morning. I'd be like, where are you going? He's young. He could be a blizzard out there. He out there running, running in the snow, just running. And he used to always say, Ma, I'm going to be a millionaire. When we was young, I told Bud, no matter what nobody tell you, whatever you put your mind to, you can make it, baby. Just put your mind to it, and you gonna make it. I said, just stick to it, Bud. I said, you good in boxing, stick to it. I said, you gonna go somewhere. With his family behind him, Terrence found another home inside the gym. One that also kept him focused on reaching his championship goals. Last training session, the mitts with both. None of us had it easy growing up in North Omaha. There's a lot of violence and drugs and gangs, and poverty. 
It was hard. It was hard to stay focused on boxing when you had all that around you. But the boxing was just right dead in the center of all of that. And so we had an outlet to go to, to try to escape whatever was on this corner or that corner. We would go to the boxing gym, and the boxing gym gave you hope. We love you both! That's right! Once you got boxing on your side, you always got something to look forward to. If it's the next fight or even going to the gym later on that day. You always had that to look forward to then being on the streets and being with your partners every day, day in and day out, and not getting nothing accomplished. Boxing helped a lot against all the adversities that's actually still there in North Omaha. Right. Best training camp that we ever had in my history of working with Terrence. Best training camp. Best training camp. Staying focused, right. the main thing, working out every day. Focus, as focused as I've ever seen this kid, and that's what he need to get to that next level. Right, no doubt. I was one direction. The streets got in my life, but at the same time, I never lost sight of the vision that I was heading and I was become a world champion. It was always my destiny and my goal, my dreams to be a world champion. Ever since I was little, I could remember them asking me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a world champion. And everybody want to be a firefighter, a police officer, and this and that, doctor, lawyer. I want to be a world champion boxer. That was just always me. So even though I was in the streets, I was always going to the gym. Terrence was still the same kid that he was when he first started boxing. He's joyful, playful. But when it's time to fight, he gonna fight. He gonna fight. He, gonna, he going in there for the win. He a lion in there. He'll go get you. Long known as the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas attracts the best talent from all over the globe, including former two-time welterweight champion Sean Porter, who arrived here alongside his father from their hometown of Akron, Ohio, to hone Sean's already formidable talent. Oh, look, check this out. We're in Akron, Ohio. This is my brother. Is that you? Mother, mother. Tell somebody your name. Look, you got the braids. <laughs> What's going on? It's Showtime Sean Porter, a.k.a. Mr. Superman. <laughs> How old were you? Uh, 20. You 20? Maybe. When we do it, we do it real big. This is the guy that's responsible for all the style. This is the guy that's responsible for everything that's making it happen. Let's talk Young about what's Porter. going on and what's next for my man. Young Kenny Porter. Porter. Tell somebody what's going on, bro. We thought this might be Sean's pro debut, but he's still working with this Olympic thing. So we said, you know what, we're going to jump it off anyway. He boxing tonight, he on a plane going back to Olympic Training Center in Colorado tomorrow to go to the next uh, World Championships. As an amateur, Porter had astounding success, winning over 275 bouts, including victories over the toughest competition he could find. I would say the reason he has a resume that, that he has in the pros is because of what we did in the amateurs. We never backed away from any challenges. I, of course, remember this, being just being all over him. I was all over most of the guys I fought. They couldn't handle it. And I was very quick and very fast. We, we fought just about every guy that you could fight that was a top level middleweight, and he's got wins over all of these guys. I'm sitting here, I'm watching this fight right now with Daniel Jacobs, and I'm like, you can hear the crowd, you can hear them yelling, and I'm just sitting back thinking to myself, like, even back then, like, I loved that. That was what I loved about boxing, and that's what I love about boxing now. Yet, in spite of all his eventual wins, it was a decision early on that perhaps shaped his destiny and set the stage for a highly anticipated professional career. I want to say he was probably like 18 and 0. And I said, Sean, you're going to have to make a decision. 
because I'm leaving. I'm moving to Vegas. You going to stay here with your friends? Are you coming to Vegas? He said, can you give me one more day to get a few things together, and then I'll be going with you, you know? And we left everything that was going on behind us behind us. Leaving Ohio was very hard for me because I was leaving a lot of friends. My friends are like my family. And then, of course, having real blood family at home, I didn't want to leave anybody. And uh, when we finally got here, you know, I, I told him, I said, if you want to be a president of the United States, you live in the White House. And if you want to be world champion, you live in Las Vegas. And this is where we're at. And um, this is where we'll be. I was miserable when I first moved out here. I didn't want to be here. I hated it here. But I had a song on, and it was kind of speaking to me. And it was basically saying, why are you mad about being where every fighter wants to be? Every fighter in this world wants to perform in Las Vegas, and you're right here. And I remember making that decision at that point. I shook my head. I was like, man, you got to let this go. <laughs> yeah, move forward. That was when I made the decision that I was going to thrive and make home Las Vegas. A successful professional career begins in the amateurs. And it is there where Terrence Crawford learned a lesson that has motivated him ever since. He had good skills. A good body shot. Ooh. Mm -hmm. uh, Bud was, what you think Bud was, what, 132 or 25 here or something? 32. At this point, Bud was sparring everybody in the gym. He sparring 32, 41, 52, 65. I was at 65 this year. So he sparred heavyweights, light heavyweights, everybody. Anybody in the gym at this point, anybody. Good body shot, bud. My amateur days was rocky. I believe politics played a lot of factors in, in a lot of my fights. The whole time, it was cool for me, though, because it was just building me into a, a tougher individual. Boxing out of the blue corner from Omaha, Nebraska, Terrence Crawford. That's right, baby. Crawford. Tell me how he get like eight points in this round. And I was winning before we went in this round. I got like one point in this round. That's one. one. Nah, he's going to get his rhythm now. Huh? Good counter, baby. Oh. Thunder. I had to fight like that because of the amateur scorer. I never wanted to fight like that, but that's clickers. Click, click, click. Mm -hmm. You gotta make sure you land a punch, bow, move, bounce, boom, counter. So then I vowed in my professional career that I wasn't gonna lighten up like I did in the amateur days. It just made me learn that you can't let it be close. You can't let it be close. Your winner in the red card from Ali. Ali. Stop, stop. Here's what the problem is. Get back on defense like I ask. You're standing in front of him, 30 shots. 30 shots, slip, slip, pivot, turn. Quit doing what you want to do. You understand? 100%, yes, sir. Much of Sean Porter's stellar amateur success can be attributed to his head trainer and father, Kenny Porter. However, in spite of all their accomplishments, the two are no strangers to tough love. I've been blessed with an amount of patience that is really uncommon. Time. What I ask you to do? If you don't work on it, you're not going to be able to transfer it to the fight. My dad, at 33, my dad is softer on me than he was probably when I was 13. Definitely much softer than he was when I was 23. Let me tell you about Sean Porter. Instead of doing defense, guess what? I don't want to do what you just told me to do. I'm going to hit him. That's not what I'm asking for. Resist doing what you want to do and what I'm asking you to do. Basic, fundamental, offense, defense. We've had some situations where we really butted heads and it was got really ugly. Got really ugly to the point where I did have those thoughts of, you know, hey, I, I, I can't with him anymore. 
If you're in and out, commit to it. If you're slipping, commit to it. If you're pivoting, commit to it. From the outside in, people look and they say, oh, he's being hard on that guy. You know what? Everything that you deal with in this ring is hard. Get down to the body when you get close. So the person that's training you and preparing you for war has got to be for real with you. If you keep listening to Sean and not listening to me, you're not going to be successful. Do you understand? Yes. If it's anything less than that, he's contributed to your failure. You got to be smart. You got to be intelligent, right? So I borrow other people's intelligence all the time. I'm going to give you some of mine. That's it. We're done. Today was easy for me to listen to my dad and, and have the, the true understanding that he's telling me the right things. Be different if I didn't agree. So there's certain things that jumpstart him. And one of those main things that jumpstart him is me, right? And so this wasn't it. Oh, there's more to come. Absolutely. This wasn't it. I met Bud about February of 95. We was at the CW Boxing Gym. I was 14 and Bud was seven. Step back. The boxing is really what brought us together. I took boxing real serious. I was an amateur standout, and he was one of my sparring partners, actually. That's right. And so after that, I had a, a lot of affection for him because I, I seen his heart. Terrence's whole boxing career has been with Bernard. Bernard's always been right there with him. As they was coming up, they used to spar all the time. Bernard used to get the best of him. Just buzz the actual words. I can't wait till I get bigger. I'm gonna start kicking your ass. <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one. Ah. Double in the right. <clears throat> there you go. Bernard always been in the background pushing Terrence along, pushing him along, pushing him along. He's a straight motivator. Half a pound. Best fighter in the world. Bud Crawford. Watch the way champion in the world. Here we go. That's right. Bernard always been somebody that I looked up to. Just always just this big brother to me. Walk that bag, champ. Walk that bag. You're going to get it. You ain't leaving no stone unturned. Bernard is good to be around because, you know, he's going to always keep you on your points, keep you sharp. Oh, let me see some speed on that bag. Let's go. Let's there you go. go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. bud. Let's yes, go. Sir. Let's go. Help, help. Let's go. Yeah. Best fighter in the world, Bud Crawford. Nice work. Nice. Nice. As Sean Porter graduated from extraordinary amateur success to his professional career, his father and head trainer pushed his son to live up to the nickname Showtime. Sean Porter's an exciting fighter. The bell rings, and you won't get excitement. He's throwing punches. He's moving towards you. He's moving quick this way. He's moving quick that way. If you hit him with a shot, he's coming right back with two or three punches. Showtime, Sean! If he's fighting your favorite fighter, that guy's in trouble. In the Sebastian Formella fight, I could see very quickly that their number one game plan was to not get knocked out. And I think that when you come to the ring with that type of mindset, you, you, you're hard to, to knock out. We hit him with a lot of punches. He took a lot of shots. We hurt him bad, but, you know, his heart said, hey, I'm not going to give up. Look at this action by Sean Ford. I gave that kid some malicious punishment, and he fought through it all. You no, know, you don't get the knockout, but you show the world what you can do, but you also expose a little bit more of your offensive and defensive arsenal. Showtime, Sean Porter! For years, Porter and Crawford navigated the same weight class, each becoming champions, yet never found themselves standing across the ring from one another until now. Terrence Crawford has known me for a long time, so he knows that I can box, he knows that I can use the ring, and he knows that I got some power. 
Give me two of those. So there won't be any surprises in terms of the way he's going to prepare for me. In relation. Contacted Terrence two years ago. He didn't want to fight Sean. He was contacted a year ago. He told Sean, well, I got a couple other things going on. I'm, you know, if things don't work out, you know, I'll give you a call. He never gave us a call. He don't want this fight. It's here, but he doesn't really want it. The difference between you and the other person is you got to do that quick. It's like Iverson with a crossover. If Iverson does his crossover slow, it ain't no more good, right? So you got to do it like it's supposed to be done every time. My goal a long time ago was to become one of the most exciting fighters in the world. And then once people told me that I could become one of the greats of my era, I made that a goal of mine as well. So it rests on November 20th. All men have something they fight for. For some, it's glory. For others, redemption. And for many, it's legacy. And when all those factors collide, it becomes about something greater. For one of his generation's greatest icons, it's a chance to silence all doubts and showcase once and for all what makes him a pound for pound great. When it's all said and done, when I retire, and people gonna look back and they're gonna be like, man, dude was good. While for another, it's the opportunity to prove that his aggression, strength, and pedigree finally get the recognition they deserve. If he's the most dominating fighter in the world, I plan to be more dominating than him. On November 20th, a welterweight super bout, decades in the making, will finally come to be. WBO welterweight champion of the world, Next time on Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Crawford versus Porter. Showtime, Sean Porter. It's no secret that I consider us to be friends. I don't, I don't know what, what you consider us to be now at this point, but. Ain't no friends till after the fight. Here you go. I'm not mad at that. I never even thought that me and Sean Porter would ever even step in the ring together. We here now, and there's no turning back. Man, you need to throw a barn burner. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>